Welcome back to the From Pain to Purpose podcast. This is episode number two, where we are beginning a brand new podcast that is meant to be um, linked with a brand new book that's coming out called From Pain to Purpose. And it talks about rediscovering joy after facing loss. And that can be loss of a loved one. It can be loss of a job or loss of health. There's many ways that pain and loss enters our life. But you know, it's the same God that is there for each of us through whatever it is that comes our way. So here joining us today on the podcast is Mary Ann Kaufman. She is a young homeschooling mother of three, a trail ultra marathon runner. I think I read that right. As well as a musician songwriter. And amazingly, she also says she loves bread, which I'm not exactly sure how that correlates with the marathon runner, but I trust her on that. (laughs) Hey, the carbs help me run. (laughs) Okay, there you go. So many things, but she's an incredible woman and we're so happy to have her with us. Welcome to the podcast, Marianne. Thank you. It is so good to be here. Um, There's a little part of me that's fangirling because since I was just young, I've looked up to your family so much. And, um, I, I remember y'all coming to, um, sing at our church and share, and I had never been through anything that deeply painful, but it always just blessed me so much, the heart of God that y'all showed. And, um, so it's really an honor to be here. Mm -hmm. Well, it is, it's an honor for us to have you. And um, first of all, I just wanted to mention my mom, Cindy, and the the co-writer of the book, she um, would have loved to be here today. She was originally planning on doing this, having this conversation, but she was unfortunately not able to make it. But she did also tell me to just like um, pass on uh, her greetings to you. So. All right. Yes. Tell her that I wish she could have been here. All right. Absolutely. So as we get started, um, why don't you share just a little bit of your current life, like where you live and your family, um, what's going on, um, in your life. It's been, you know, like, um, over the years that we've had kind of relationship with like different people around you. Um, and particularly during one part of your story that we kind of got to know your, um, father and mother-in-law and like that, but give us just a little snapshot of, of your current life. Right. Okay. So I'm living in Oglethorpe, Georgia, which is close to like Perry, Georgia, um, about two hours south of Atlanta. I um, have three children. Um, Landon is my oldest. He's seven and Skyla is four and Aspen is two. And um, I homeschool and um, my husband, David, and I um, lead worship together at our church. It's one of my favorite things. Um, I, let me think. It's funny now that you ask, I just blank about everything about myself. <laughs> um, we're That's actually normally go right now. Uh. <laughs> um, just this year, we um, started being involved with our youth um, in youth ministry. And so that's been a new stage of life and it's been very fulfilling. Mm-hmm. Um, but also the, we had had a very slow life and now we're a lot more busy with a lot more things. And so that's been an adjustment. Yeah. But I'm learning how fulfilling it is to, you can be tired physically, pouring yourself out, and yet built up spiritually and refreshed in that way. So that's a blessing. Amen. Absolutely. And even emotionally, you know, when there's those times of like pouring out and, um, yeah, even pouring out yourself emotionally, it can be rewarding and almost filling at the same time, which is kind of Mm -hmm. a paradoxical thing, but (laughs) that's really cool. Yeah. So, um, something that people may not realize and just like looking at your life now, whether, you know, following your social media pages or just hearing you talk and hearing you talk about, um, your life and the stage of life you're at, like, it seems like, or it could seem like, like what pain could you have went through? Um, your just, your demeanor is very peaceful and joyful and like, um, so young and full of life that it seems as if, you know, life has probably been pretty easy for you. Um, I know we, we get that sometimes my family and going into prisons, you know, we'll pull up with at least pre COVID days, we'll pull up with our, you know, big bus and we're coming in all as a family and we look, you know, we're singing nice songs. We're looking great. 
But as, you know, we start to share kind of more of the journey, it's like, wow, you can almost feel like the shock in the room of like, wow, because it seems so paradoxical that, you know, both things could be true at the same time. Um, So share with Mm -hmm. us a little bit about that, just like what that time has looked like for you, some of your um, journey with, with pain and suffering. Right. So um, I got married at 18. I was very young and very in love and um, oblivious to any kind of deep, deep pain. Um, I married someone from North Carolina, Norcus, Norcus, Marcus Kaufman. Um, and we, um, I moved up to North Carolina and we were married for 15 months. Um, and it was a happy, fun time, um, an incredible 15 months, but, um, 15 months in, we came home one day to, um, some men. Okay. So we pulled up about to pull into our drive and there was a man standing um, right by our driveway. And he, it seemed kind of strange. And he was just standing there like staring at us. And Marcus rolled down the window and asked if he needs anything. He was basically right in front of our house on the road. And um, he just stared at us. He didn't say anything. He just stared. And I thought that maybe um, he was our dog was there kind of jumping on him. I thought maybe he was just, um, uncomfortable with that or something. So to me, it seems strange, but I thought this guy probably needs help. He's probably just kind of freaked out by the dog. Um, Marcus felt like it was a little bit weird. And so he said, he'd just feel better if you take me to the neighbor's house. And I, I didn't think there was anything to it. I felt bad leaving the guy there by the road, but Marcus, had a, apparently a protective husband instinct. And so he took me to our um, neighbor's house and dropped me off there and went back. And as we had driven down to our neighbor's house, we had seen a car broken down, like between our house and the neighbor's house. So we were like, ah, yeah, this person's probably needing help with their car or something. Um, But Marcus left me there just to be safe and went back. And um, he was down there for several minutes and um, it, it felt a lot longer, <laughs> um, cause I started being like, this is strange. Cause I saw another guy walking back down to the car. Anyway, I could make this really, really long. I got to decide what needs to be said and what doesn't. Mm-hmm. So, um, a few minutes later, I heard gunshots, a bunch of gunshots. And I right away, like had this gripping fear in me yet. I was like, surely not, surely it's not him. So I tried calling him and it just would go straight to voicemail over and over. And um, so then I started getting freaked out and long story short, Marcus had um, come in on, or he didn't actually go into the house, but what had been going on was the guy that was standing by the road was waiting outside as basically a lookout and someone was inside robbing our house. And so Marcus drove up in his car and pulled up to that. And, um, he, the guy had a gun and he ended up being shot. And those were the shots that I heard. Um, so, you know, in that, in that time I was, there was fear. And yet at the same time, it was like, no, it's, there's some kind of misunderstanding, but the more I sat there, the more scared I got. And I took off running down the road. Um, I wasn't sure what I was going to do, but, um, so it really is hard to know what all to say and how to condense this. Yeah, no, that's all right. You're Um, saying you, you went running towards your house or somewhere else. Right. Towards my house. I'm, I don't know what I thought I was going to do, but there was just this panic and I seven months pregnant. I didn't mention that I was seven months pregnant with our son. Um, we were so excited for a little boy and Marcus was so excited, um, to have a son. And so, um, he ended up, it ended up, he was shot in the back of his head and, um, 
was in the hospital for 18 days fighting for his life. And that was an up and down time. Um, there were so many times that things looked positive and they seemed sure he was going to pull through, which was incredible considering he had been shot in his head. Like it's amazing. He lived that long. And so with how amazing that was that he lived that long, we just knew like, this is already crazy. God worked a miracle. So he's, he's gonna be okay. I was convinced that God was going to heal Marcus. Um, and so through all the ups and downs, there was just, um, we got a big following online because it was in the news. Um, there was a pair a prayer prayer page started for him. And so many people started following that, like mind blowing the way, the way God put the story out there because, um, and so with all of that, it seemed like it was set up for God to show his power in a way that was like unbelievable. And you know, it's God. And so even when it came down to Marcus's last few days, when it got really, really bad, there was this part of us that was just like, it's just set up even more for an absolute miracle because the doctors won't be able to explain it. And there was just, we had a lot of faith, um, believing that God was going to heal. Um, so when it came time, when the doctor said there's no brain activity, basically, and it's time to take him off life support, um, down to the very moment that he, they took off life support and he took his last breath. I was watching and waiting and I was, I had my head there on his chest and I was just waiting for this miraculous moment when the life support is taken off and he keeps on breathing. And, um, so it, there was a moment of kind of, I mean, obviously at that point I knew there was Clearly there was a big chance he was going to die. Yet at the same time, I had that hope that just had not gone away. And the same with so many in our family, my dad, um, he experienced the same thing just, and seeing so many people that I looked up to so much, believing kind of that same thing. It, it was shattering. Um, but so then there were so many questions like, God, you had the perfect opportunity to like show your power. And all of these people watching the story could see. And it just felt like, now what? Like, what's, what could God, what benefit is this really? Um, and so am I going too long? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, it's, it's totally fine. Those just those questions okay. of like wrestling through um, those those why God questions, because it seemed like, you know, this was this was the perfect setup for God to like show himself strong and and bring glory. And I just, yeah, personally relate so much to that. I remember mm -hmm. um, from my perspective, having intersected somewhat with members of um, Marcus's family. Um, and actually Marcus was planning on being to an event that my dad was directing a prison ministry event the week after, I believe, or two weeks after, um, the, yeah. the gun. I think it was, I think it was the next week, the next week. Okay. Yeah. I knew it was like, not, not long after. And so I remember we were there at at the event and people were, you know, becoming aware, they were aware of what was going on with Marcus and just the praying that we were doing as a group for Marcus and people there that were, mm -hmm. you know, getting words from God that they felt like he was going to be healed. And just then the, the devastation okay. that happens then when, when that, um, is, is not the case is, is like, it's, it's a huge, a huge thing. Um, oh, so that's, can spiral, spiral into some of the, like, um, what if questions and why God questions and, mm -hmm. um, and all of that. Okay. So, yeah, if you could talk a little more about the, um, maybe just the, the emotions of, of that and kind of some of the things that you are wrestling with, um, 
during that season of time um, after his passing. And yeah, and then if there's some more of the story that you wanted to um, touch on as well. Right. Okay. So yeah, I can relate so much to the betrayal that you mentioned. And I didn't, I didn't battle that too much, but I just remember thinking like, God, you've seen, okay. So earlier in my life, I had always had a little bit of a fear and I'm sure we all do, but I think it was a little more intense for me of losing someone I loved. Mm -hmm. That was my worst fear. Mm -hmm. I, um, I would every single day, like I loved my parents so much. And so every single day I would pray to God and just tell him, please come back before my parents die. Mm. That was my prayer. Mm. And with Marcus, like I knew God, knowing that I had been so, God had been walking with me through all of this, Mm -hmm. leading me into marriage with Marcus, seeing how much I loved him and what a uh, miracle it was us coming together. Like it, it just felt like a dream to me. And I was so in love. And so, and I was just like, God, you knew all of this. You knew how much I, how much just the thought of losing him tore me apart. And every day I would just pray for protection over him. And just like, it seemed like something I could never bear. And looking back, I know that God used this to show me that I could, because he would be there. And there's, you can't see it if you haven't walked through it. And so um, he taught me in a huge way, just no matter, yeah, these things can happen, terrible things that you would think could, it doesn't happen to you, happens to other people. Yeah. It made me like so aware this can happen, like this can happen to me. And even now there is um, such an awareness of that that sometimes there's like a battle even inside me. Like I have to fight the feeling of things are really good right now, but, but for how long, like how long am I actually going to have my children and my husband? Um, So at the same time as that, there's also a peace knowing if that comes that God will be there. And he showed that so clearly, but yeah, the, um, the feelings of just like, um, because of my close walk with God and knowing he know, knew the deepest parts of my heart. Um, there is a sense of betrayal for a little while, but then I, he was so present. And that's the thing that just, I couldn't, even though I didn't understand, I couldn't be angry or frustrated because he was, I felt him like it never before in my life. And he would give me these little things constantly that made me know, I love you and I'm, I'm providing for you. And um, so it just, he just brought me to a place where he's like, child, I, I, it's not for you to know the reasons why right now. And he didn't make me understand everything, but there was just, but I will be here. And that, that became all I needed. And I just um, clung to that. And there were so many times that he did things like there was this time that I was having a really rough day and it was just several weeks after Marcus had died, I think. And mom and I had, we had pulled up to a store and we're about to go in. And I um, suddenly like a song had just started, like just the first little bits of the music. I had no idea what song it was. And we were about to get out of the car. And I just felt God tell me that this song is for me and I'm supposed to stay there. Mm -hmm. So I was like, mom, I think I'm supposed to hear this song. And so we got back in and um, it was Broken Hallelujah by the actors. And I'd never heard it before, but it was just saying, um, I can barely stand right now. Everything is crashing down and I wonder where you are. Um, Something about not having the words to pray, but you're the one who can heal my heart. Something I forget the exact, but then it says, even though I don't know what your plan is, I know you will make beauty from these ashes. And I just felt like it was God telling me that like he had, and that meant so much to me that he saw me having that hard day and he put that there for me. And so that 
connection, ultimately, that connection with him and knowing the God that is in control of everything and all powerful, that he is intimate with me and loves me and has that relationship with me and is walking with me through all of this. That just makes everything like when I look at people going through hardship like this, that don't have that, I cannot even fathom. And that along with um, church family and brothers and sister in Christ gathering around you, that is so huge. And so it breaks my heart when I see people going through tragic things like that, that don't have that. And I know like that, that gripping pain that I would feel. And then God would comfort me to just, to just feel that loneliness and pain without that hope that I had that I cannot even imagine. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That becomes, I mean, it's, it's always our lifeline, but it's just, um, we recognize so much more our need of him, um, during those times. For sure. Yeah. I've, I've thanked God, like that is not something I would have chosen for myself, but when I look back and see the ways that it changed me and the, the perspective shift it gave me on what really matters. And even just the way that I came to know him deeper than I'd known him for so much of my life. I had been um, saved since I was nine, but I, knew a whole new side of him that I'd never experienced before. And that was special to me. And it is still like, I'm thankful for that opportunity to um, have experienced him in that way. Mm -hmm. And to, to have something that reminds me and is a mental shift to what actually matters in life. Mm -hmm. Um, Because it really does. It makes you take life a lot more seriously when you've been through something like that. Mm-hmm. you realize how frail it is and you realize the things that really matter. Mm-hmm. And so I'm thankful for that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there, there was a chapter in the book that had something that I've just, I've never seen it touched on and I'm sure it is in, um, I mean, I've read grief books and, um, and listened to messages and stuff, but it's just, there was something that just caught me. Maybe it was just where I was at in life that I was, I received it more or it did something more in me, but the chapter, um, I forget exactly how it said, um, it, not accepting. Hmm. Is that chapter, chapter Is it eight? accepting the chapter eight? Um, let's see. I have it here facing the good and not so good about our loved one. Right. Right. So going through that book, I realized, I feel like I told David, I don't think y'all sent me that book. I don't think the main purpose in that was for me to review it. I feel like God wanted me to read that book Mm -hmm. Um, because I resonated so much with so much in that chapter, especially because there is a part of me that I um, would never go to, I didn't know how to deal with because when someone you love dies, all you want to acknowledge and think about is the good times and the easy times. And, um, so it was kind of like a part of me was tucked away, um, because our marriage was so incredible and he was such a good husband. Um, the parts that were hard, I just didn't, I didn't want to acknowledge, but at the same time, um, when he died, I hadn't processed some of the hard in our marriage that we had faced. Um, there were hard things because no one is perfect. And it's like that chapter brought out, like it made me realize it's okay to talk to, to open up to some people about, um, what I'm feeling and that no one can be expected to be perfect. And so the hard things in our marriage were not to talk about that is not dishonoring him. Um, obviously within limits, but, um, Mm -hmm. I, it just opened something 
up in me and made me realize there's stuff there that I need to heal from. Mm -hmm. And so there was a part where it just said to first, you were supposed to write a letter to um, your loved one that you lost, acknowledging and thanking them for all of the good. And I doing that obviously had me like just remembering again, how well he treated me, how, and there was so much good. And, but then to, even though he can't, I, I knew he wasn't going to read it or I actually didn't write it down. I was just talking as if he was there. There was something so healing about having the conversation that I couldn't have with him because there's something so final about his death and having these things to process that I hadn't fully worked through. And then to realize stuff like ways that this pain had affected me and stuff like that down the road and to not be able to talk to him about it was such a closed off feeling. And at the same time, I felt like I couldn't talk to anyone else either. Um, and so that was just very healing for me. Um, and it just opened the door to me opening up to a couple people and, um, and it felt, it felt like a closure in, in that, like having that conversation with him that I couldn't have. And technically he didn't hear. Um, it was just, it was still healing somehow. And, um, yeah, I'm just very grateful for that. The, the, it opening my eyes to, there are some places in my heart that I need to go to that I can't just push away and, um, and to have that freedom to go there, um, without fear of dishonoring him. Mm -hmm. Um, because there's, it just, he was such a good husband. And so I'm feeling now even like, I like just, I need to emphasize that, that it wasn't all hard. There was this little hard, but I needed to work through that little hard. Yeah. Um, am I making sense? Yeah, yeah absolutely. It, <laughs> it wasn't a huge thing, but I think it compounded by me not having anyone to talk to about it. And, um, I, there was, there's regret in me, even in how I responded, like things that I wish that I could, now that I'm seeing the, the things that were going on in my heart that back then when he was here, I couldn't really even explain. Mm. And then to, to be able to understand what was going on in my heart. And now he's not here to tell him. Um, like, and just the regrets there and how, how I responded because I didn't know I hadn't processed what I was feeling. And then to, when I have processed it, I can't process it with him or, you know, yeah. um, yeah. so I, I felt like <laughs> to, to some people, it wouldn't make sense to be able to, to have spoken to him, like, as if he was there and then that somehow be healing because I know in my head, he didn't hear anything but it helped me process it, getting it out. And it was just freeing. Mm -hmm. And I so much through the whole grieving process, that's so much how I, how I worked is I, I didn't push anything away and I just felt things as they came and worked through them, mm -hmm. everything else. But, um, that, yeah, this was just the one area that I just, I just didn't go. And I didn't even realize what it was doing in me. But God just showed me recently that that was actually an opportunity for the enemy to just, it was affecting my heart because I wasn't, um, it wasn't being dealt with and it was getting worse because of that. And um, so just to bring it into the light and let God heal it, mm -hmm. it, I feel like strongholds are being broken and, and things like lies that have been in my head, um, I'm finding freedom. So, and another part I wanted to mention in the book um, was the, the part where there is a, a mind picture. Mind pictures always get me and the way it just had you imagine Jesus standing there and he's holding out a yoke and like a wooden yoke that oxen would be in. And um, he's saying, come to me, all you who weary, who, who labor, mm -hmm. come unto me all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, that passage. Mm -hmm. um, and then, then it says, am I allowed to read a little bit from the book? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, it says, 
to imagine he's lifting this yoke toward you as if offering it to you. He gently nods his head and smiles as he says that, come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I'm humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Jesus then slips his head into one side of the yoke, points to the empty side, and motions you to place yourself in it and be joined together with him. He continues to speak to you. I know you've been suffering terribly. You've been bearing a heavy burden, and I want to bear it with you. Now that you are here beside me, we will both bear this burden together. I will teach you to bear it and ease it for you by imparting my life to yours. As we walk through these dark days together, you can hold on to me and experience my strength and support, my patience and comfort, my undying love and unconditional acceptance. I am all that and more to you. Rely on me, trust in me, let go of your own strength and efforts to make it through this hard time and rest in me. As you take hold of me, you will sense my empowering spirit living in you, transforming you more and more into my likeness. Will you be yoked with me? And I know I so much experienced that him helping me carry my burdens. Um, but that mental picture, I was just like, man, I wish I would have had that in my head in the hard times back then to just imagine I can look over and Jesus is there with me, helping me bear this burden. So that was really beautiful to me. So that was one of the, the forgiveness, forgiveness thing was one of the biggest ways that I felt God in me and was like, wow, this is not natural. This is not me, what I'm feeling toward these men. Um, I, the, I felt genuine love and compassion for them. Um, and I didn't even, I'm so thankful, um, all glory to God, but I didn't even battle um, anger and bitterness toward them. Um, that was, yeah, something that I didn't have to wrestle with. And I'm so thankful. Um, but I was actually able to go to the trial of the, the guy that actually shot Marcus. And, um, am I remembering right? Were your parents there? They were. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so I was able to look him in the eye and, and a part of me, like I had, I knew I had forgiven them, but a part of me was scared to look him in the eye and I didn't know what I was going to feel. Um, and so there was kind of a lot of tension built up in me, like, um, not knowing what to expect when I meet his eyes, where will there be anger or something in him that triggers something in me? And I realize, oh, I haven't forgiven, but, um, I had the opportunity to look him right in the eyes and I felt that love that I know is from God and that is not natural. And I praise God for that, but mm -hmm. I was able to tell him that, um, that I forgive him and, um, and that I hope that he, sometime, someday he can come to know my father. And, um, that was a very healing thing for me to, to, um, to be able to share that with him. Yeah. And, and that was, I great. can honestly say I would be so, so happy mm -hmm. to hear if I, if I would ever hear that he had given his heart to the Lord. Um, I just, I, that would be so special to me. Um, and I know Marcus would want that. And I know he would want us to forgive them because he has that heavenly perspective now. And um, yeah, so I'm thankful so much for God the, how God actually transforms our hearts and makes us something that makes no sense. People were actually, there were some people mad at me or just like, how could she love her husband and respond this way? Like something is weird about this. And it's just my God, <laughs> he changes your heart. And as far as that, you had said, what would I say to someone who's going through something right now? Mm -hmm. Honestly, that has been so hard for me. <laughs> Um, since going through what I went through, I've seen how differently people grieve. Um, I grieved so differently than some of Marcus's family. And sometimes we had to come to a place where we like realized we're just grieving differently and it's hard to understand each other. But so what one person needs, another person may not need. And I've also seen how frail words can seem, um, to you know, when someone's trying to encourage you and, 
and it just kind of <laughs> falls flat because nothing. Yeah. So because of that, it makes it like, who, what would I say to someone? Like to me, the biggest way that you can help someone it, or what helped me the most was people just showing that they care and um, being present and surrounding me and letting me know I'm not walking through this alone. And I can't do this, do that for um, you who are going through something terrible right now, but just, just know that in those moments, even where God, I had times where God felt distant because of there was so much pain. I had this awareness that he was there. Mm -hmm. There were phases in my grief where I, um, I had to just cling to the fact that he is, even when I couldn't feel him because there was so much grief, mm -hmm. um, pressing down on my heart. I couldn't feel much, but just mm -hmm. know that you have a loving father and he cares, he cares deeply about what you're going through and um, just rest in him. Know that he, nothing is beyond his control. Nothing is out of his hand. He is trustworthy. He has um, your good in mind and for his glory. And so there is nothing to fear. I know it hurts, but when you can just know that you can rest in who is in control, and that just, just knowing that nothing is out of his hand um, is so comforting to me. And if you know the character of knowing the character of my God made me in those moments know, even if it doesn't make sense, I know he's good and I know there is a good purpose in that. So anyone who's going through um, terrible grief right now or loss, just rest in that, that it's not beyond his control. This didn't catch him off guard. It's not an accident. He's like, he's not like, oh no, something went wrong. Now, how am I going to fix this? Mm -hmm. He has been in control all along. He's sovereign and he's trustworthy. So that's, I, I'm not going to say you'll get over it or it'll get better in a year or anything like that, <laughs> but just rest in the father. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's one of the things that, um, I believe is talked about in the book is like people going through difficult things are not, they're not suffering from their, their heads aren't broken. It's their hearts that are broken. I don't know how I, the, the church gathered around me, Christians that I didn't even know brothers and sisters in Christ sending letters and, and every single time um, it was a, I, these people made the choice to do it. And I, thank them. And I'm so grateful to them, but also I would always see it as God. They were being the hands and feet of Christ. And, um, so that is really huge. Surround yourself with people who um, will encourage you. Don't try to walk through it alone. Even if, um, even if you don't know how to express your grief, that was one of my things. Like sometimes I just didn't know how to express what I was feeling, but just people's presence and knowing that they cared, um, was a big part in healing and working through things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so as, as we wrap up here, I know with like your particular story and journey, there was a lot of, just because of the nature of what happened, there was a lot of media coverage. There was a lot of like things kind of blew up overnight. Um, and yeah. there, from what I understand, there's, the potential of like a movie coming to be um, with that right. story. Um, if you want to tell us just a little bit about that and then ways that people can stay in touch with you if they want to reach out um, social media accounts or whatever you have, share a right. little bit of that with us. Okay. So there is a lady who works in um, film production and she um, Actually, she writes storylines for films and she's written some books as well. But so she's been involved in um, pretty many movies and she the story just really touched her heart. And she's a fellow sister in Christ. And so she um, really wanted a movie made about this to um, one that emphasizes God in the story. And so she's been for years working on, she actually wrote a script, a full movie script, um, so well done, but she is being very cautious who she hands this over to. 
um, because once she hands it over, they can tweak things how they want and use parts of the story they want and change some. Mm -hmm. And so she's been working hard to find someone that she can trust to hand it over to. Um, and that's been tricky because a, there have been a lot of people who want to change the story a little, just to make it a little more relatable. And, um, in the thing of forgiveness, make it, um, a battle to forgive that kind of thing. Um, and she, she's really wants to keep the truth of the story. And she's like, that's part of the God in the story is that he was able to give me a heart of forgiveness. And that's not natural. And so a lot of people are going to be like, that's not relatable. Um, but that's the story. <laughs> so she's been, um, it's just been a process of her taking this around to different people. Um, there are multiple people that have um, committed basically to acting in the movie once they get all the, all of that figured out, the producer, that kind of thing. Um, but she, she now just let me know recently that she's um, starting a new film company. Um, I'm not sure if it's just her or her and a few others, but in that it's looking like it could be getting closer. Like if it's done in that way, then she will have more control over how it's done. Mm -hmm. So that could be sometime in the next two years that that would start or that they'd start the filming process, I guess, but it's so up in the air. I can't make any <laughs> like say any set time or, or if it'll even ever for sure happen, but there is a chance of it. So, um, and yeah, you can follow me on social media. Um, and I would definitely, if something would happen with that and um, they would actually start working on a movie, I would definitely update people on that. Um, my, are you going to do a link to my social media yeah, accounts? I can, I'll put a link in the description, but you can also okay. tell people. Right. So um, I think it's my <laughs> Instagram is Marianne. I think it's Marianne underscore Kaufman. I think so. I'm having a hard time picturing it. Um, and then I'm just Marianne Kaufman on Facebook. For some reason, Facebook mm -hmm. decided that I can't put Marianne together. Uh, I was Marianne <laughs> for... Oh, wow. And all of a sudden, like for years, and all of a sudden they sent me this notification that I had to separate them. So um, I go by Mary Ann, but on Facebook, I'm Mary Ann Hoffman. So. <laughs> all right. Very good. Yeah. And I'll, I'll put a link in the descriptions below. Um, but yeah, that's that um, the story that has happened, like you just shared like brief little snippets of like kind of the the highlights or the, um, a few of the topics, but if there's something like that, that would go into more detail, um, that's something that mm -hmm. would be really, really awesome because it would be something that just would highlight, bring glory to God. Like you were saying, right. um, the, the, him empowering you to forgive and just mm -hmm. the amazing way that many people, multitudes of people came together around it. Right. There's so many ways and aspects that it, um, that it would bring on your glory to God. So I would love right. to see a movie like that come to be. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, if that, if that uh, happens, if that is in God's plan. So right. I feel like it would feel super crazy. Like <laughs> I can't imagine the emotions that I would feel watching it, but yeah. <laughs> absolutely absolutely but he he does that like you shared earlier he he um creates beauty from brokenness and right. um it's so exciting to see that and even in your life now because the work that god has done in um in bringing your current husband david into the picture and now your your two other children that have been added in There's addition. so much I could go into. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's a beautiful picture though of like God's um, faithfulness and him doing the very thing of um, bringing beauty out of ashes right. um, in our lives. So thank you very much for joining us today. Yes, it was an honor. Thank you.